Hello good friends, beautiful people, fellow book nerds. I... let's not... I... hmm... how do I phrase this? I don't want to go into a book buying ban, like I don't want to start one. But at this point I'm kind of embarrassed because here I am with another one and it's been a month since the last one. Plus this is pre-recorded as well so it's not even been a month. <laughs> I happen to all of a sudden get all of my special editions at the same time, like within the span of two weeks. So a lot of the books that I'm going to show you guys today are special editions. Some of them are pre-orders, some of them are bought because I was sick for a whole week and I felt very sorry for myself. So I have like 28, 29 books or something we're going to go through today. And with the special editions, I am going to show you them in detail. So that means you get to see like inside dust jacket art and end papers and stenciled edges and so on and so on. So I hope you're into that because there's gonna be a lot of it today. If you want to check out a certain genre, I always leave chapters in the timeline below and I will make sure to leave links to all of the books in the description box as well if you want to check out the synopses because sometimes I suck at summarizing books and that's okay, especially when it's books you've not read yet. So I wanted to do this today because I want to wrap them up and put them up on my shelves with all my other wrapped up books and um, my book card is full as well so I needed to empty it. So let's get to it. <laughs> We're starting out with YA as per usual. The first book I have is the February Illumicrate book which is gorgeous. Song of Silver, Flame Like Night by Emily Wen Zhao. So this is a recolor, like a color change from the original cover. I think the original is a lot more blue with maybe some orange in it or something. I can't remember. She's stunning like this though. The edges look like this. They have animals on them. So they're printed and very detailed as you can probably tell. We have some beautiful end paper art along with a signature over here. And this also has art on the naked cover with the animals too and some nice like silvery effects as well. It's very gorgeous. She's a stunning copy. Oh and this also has a bonus chapter but I don't... it's just a bonus chapter, I don't know. So as far as I have heard, the world building in this is actually really good. So we follow a girl who has been... what is it they say? She's been given a name by the Elantian colonizers. Oh, she's looking for like remnants of the past and before her mother died as well or was killed, I'm not sure about the situation, she was branded with a mark on one of her arms. But it's a weird mark because no one can see it except from herself until this guy, this very mysterious guy called Sen appears or like turns up, shows up, whatever. Sen is a bit of a special. He, he's, like I said, very mysterious. He apparently has some magical powers that he draws from demons, but this magic is both believed to be long lost and it's also... I would expect it to be very dangerous and probably... I don't know, it's a demon thing. It sounds like it's dangerous, so he has to keep it hidden as well. So along with her having this mark, which I kind of theorize has something to do with some kind of power that she's unlocking throughout the book, he's got these magical powers that he's drawing from demons. The two of them have their secrets, but maybe these powers that both of them have could also help actually freeing the kingdom, which is currently being colonized. So, or possibly destroy the world. I don't know. It's a bit, it could go both ways. So I have heard that this is very good. I'm excited to read it at some point, but um, this is too pretty to read. So it's just gonna be placed on my shelves and I'm never gonna touch it again. I know that sounds sad to some people, but my special editions, most of them, I treat like like art pieces, um, collectibles, and I just don't like to read them. I appreciate them so much. Like I love them so much, which is why I have so many after all, or by now, but I just prefer not to read them because I am clumsy. I will spill on it. I will break it apart. Heart. I just know myself well enough to know that something's gonna go wrong and I don't want anything to happen to them. So I'll get it on Kindle and read it at some point, but she's gonna stay in one piece on my shelves. Then Alcrate sent me their special edition of The Raven Boys. This is an anniversary edition, so it has a redesigned cover. The back looks like this if you want to see. There's a quote on it. It also has foiling on the naked cover with another quote. The spine looks like this in case you want to see. It has different end papers in the front here, which has a very nice, very nice vibe. And in the back, they look like this. Again, very nice chill vibe. Plus, Maggie Steve Fader herself actually did inside dust jacket art of the boys. That looks like this. And it's also signed. 
by the author. So I am always unsure how to uh, summarize The Raven Boys because I feel like the synopsis doesn't give much away. But it's got to do with one girl who, yeah, she meets this boy from a boys, an all boys school and she's been told to stay away from the school or the boys go into the school or something. I'm not really sure what the situation is exactly, but she gets entangled with these four boys. I think she also has the ability to actually see the dead possibly or something. I don't know, it's very confusing. So, but these four boys are on a mission of some kind. So she's gonna, I don't know, help them out in some way, I suppose. Maybe there's a bit of a romance. I don't know, we'll see. But I have the first two in the series, so I'm looking forward to reading them at some point. The first one is wrapped up on my shelves, so I can't just go pick it off them because I don't know where it is. But i um, very happy that Alcrate sent me this because I think it looks very good. It has a very, like, dark, mysterious vibe to it. Why are there only three boys on the cover? Where's the fourth one? I only just realized, like, where's where's the fourth boy? Where did, where did boy number four go? I don't know, mysteries. So anyway, The Raven Boys. This one I purposely don't know the synopsis for because I haven't read it. And that is because it's the Stolen Air. So this is the Illumicrate edition. I have not finished the Folk of the Air trilogy yet, so I haven't read the synopsis for this because just in case there are spoilers in it, I don't want to know. But I knew that I wanted these editions because the naked cover is so, so good. So this is an alternative, or not an alternative, it's a dust jacket. You get this book with a dust jacket done by Rosie Thorns 88 of the girl in the book whose name I don't know. But let me just show you. Because the naked cover looks like this, and I love it so much. I think it's so, so stunning. The back is somewhat the same, but then without the title. And then the edges have like this very cold and... I don't know, those are twigs, right? Yeah. Thorny twigs and like, or dead trees and like thorny things and weapons and it's just cold. I love it. And then we also got stunning end papers of our lead, lead uh, characters over here. You can literally see like he has goat legs. I remember this boy from the first book. He's grown a lot and now he's kissing a girl. So that's the thing. He grew up so fast. And then there's a bound in letter as well by Holly Black right here. So yeah, I needed this edition when they showed it because I just, I really like the naked cover but i cannot tell you what it's about just it's a spin-off of the folk of the air trilogy also by holly black so i'll wait to read this until i have read that trilogy and i'll also wait reading the synopsis until i finish the trilogy this is so embarrassing but this is like this is the sequel to one of the most stunning books that i have <laughs> So I needed it. It's very simple. I've not read the first one, but I just needed it. Okay, it's These Infinite Threads by Tehere Mafi. So it's the sequel to This Woven Kingdom. And I mean, let me just show you the, the first book, right? And then the sequel. So this, the foiling on them feels different. I will say that. This feels a little bit more textured than this, which is kind of funny. I don't know why that is, but look at them go together. Like, it's so good. And this is one of the most stunning books that I have received in a monthly box. So I needed the sequel to go with it. I have not read this though. What I remember from the synopsis is that we have a prince. I think he's the crown prince but he might also not be, <laughs> who's kind of got his eyes on this servant girl at the palace who has special eyes. So she is actually the heir to the Jin kingdom and is basically at the palace possibly to take back the kingdom or something like that. So there's a bit of like an enemies to lovers situation in this because obviously things don't go as planned because the two of them are kind of, you know, crushing in all of that, but like drama. So, and so I got the sequel now because I need my books to go together. I just need, I need them to match. It's a thing. And then the last one that I feel like I can't justify fully, but that I just, there's a reason. <laughs> but I also got The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden. This is also an Illumicrate edition. Did I even probably show you the edges on this? I don't think I did. Also, it has funky end papers as well that look like this. Kind of funny. And a small signature as well. I got all sidetracked showing you the sequel, so I'm not gonna get sidetracked with this one, I promise. But The Bear and the Nightingale by Catherine Arden, which is the first one in the Winter Night trilogy. So this is a redesigned cover. This came in a box with a lot of items. I have not read this before, so a lot of the items, I don't know like what their nods to. When it comes to the story, like I have no idea. <laughs> However, I've been wanting hardcovers of this trilogy um, since like looking into it 
I only have it on Kindle currently, the first one. So when I saw that they were gonna do redesigned covers with Rudy Beetle, I was like, I need it. <laughs> I just, I need it. So this has both front, which is very cold. I love this vibe. But also on the back, we have a priest guy. Like, who is he? I don't know, but priest guy. And then the naked book looks like this. So it has art on the naked cover and beautiful, beautiful edges that are very wintry. Very fitting right now because spring came and went. Like it just disappeared in the span of a night. It turned back to winter, I don't know. So like, this is a vibe. <laughs> but also end papers that look like this. And I love this like motif. It's the same one as on the edges, but it's just very nice. And also a signature. I can't for the life of me remember what this is about though. And I don't want to sit here and say something just to be wrong about it. The synopsis is not in the book because it's a redesigned cover. So we, <laughs> there's nothing. So I can't really tell you, but I think it's inspired by Russian folklore and there's something about our lead girl and her being told stories. I think she runs off or something. I can't fully remember but or not runs off. Something happens she has to go on the run. Can't remember but I'm very excited to read it at some point. I just um don't need to pick it off my shelves because it's on my kindle. Ooh, I can read it soon. I don't know. Let me know if you think I should do that. So then we're moving into something a little bit more new adult but specifically new adult fantasy. So first off I have Fortuna Sworn by KJ sudden because I was told that I needed to buy this so I did. I have no willpower whatsoever but she's in my hands so here we are. <laughs> Don't actually fully know the story in this other than our girl is supposed to be a nightmare which sounds so intriguing like she's supposed to be a nightmare. We were meant to be seductive. We were designed to lure humans in. Fortuna Sworn is the last of her kind so she is a nightmare. That sounds like it sounds very mean to say she's a nightmare, but like I think she's actually supposed to be a, like an actual nightmare. Don't know how else to explain it. So, oh yeah, it has Faye in it as well. There's a Faye who really likes Fortuna. So we'll see, uh, we'll see how it goes, right? But excited to read this at some point. I do love myself a good fantasy romance with Faye. So this next one, I'm pretty sure I didn't include it in the last in the last haul, but it's not been in my book card because I'm currently reading it. I got Daughter of No Worlds. We're reading it with the book club this month. Did I include it in the last haul? I've actually since also, cause I started this, I'm halfway through it and I'm really loving it. I've actually ordered the sequels. So they'll be included in the next haul that's going up on the channel after this one. But um, in this one, we follow a girl, Tasana, who has, this is fantasy romance, I wanna say mostly, but like, heavy on the fantasy actually. The romance plot is there, it's visible. It's definitely a part, but it's like nicely woven together with the fantasy, with the other plot in this, with the fantasy, <laughs> with the other plot in this. So we follow Tizana who has been a slave. So it starts out with her still being a slave. She's been saving up to buy her freedom, but then something goes wrong and she has to go on the run. So she runs off to the order that is supposed to help her free other slaves, including one of her friends who she had to leave behind when she ran off. And when she gets there, they won't help her unless she becomes an apprentice. So she has to learn how to use her powers and stuff because she has powers. She also has to learn how to fight so they can use her as one of their soldiers, you get what I mean. And so she's put together with this guy who's supposed to be her mentor and he is very hesitant to help her because he's very much a recluse. He does not want anybody on his property <laughs> and um, he's just, it's taken a while for him to warm up to her. And once they do start to warm up to each other, things start to, you know, they get closer and closer, but they also find out that some of their goals are very much aligned because it turns out that the order is not necessarily who they say they are. Exactly. The orders have bigger plans for Tasana, darker plans. The order is not who they say they are. They have secrets and they're not good. So Tasana has ended up in a bad place, but luckily she has her mentor. I love this so much. This is so great. I just love the buildup. I just am enjoying seeing them getting closer and I'm just having a good time with this. Love it to bits. Can't wait for the other two to arrive. <laughs> then I got for, cause we're reading that here in March, but in April we're gonna be reading Frost by C.N. Crawford. <laughs> I'm actually really proud that I've managed to get so many indie books. I got more than just these. 
I'm very proud of myself. Support indie authors, yes. So in Frost, we follow our lead girl who has one day come home to find her boyfriend in bed with another woman. And so she runs off, decides to stay single forever. Unfortunately for her, is it the Seelie? Yes, the Seelie King arrives in town and he's like, I'm looking for a wife. Can anybody be my wife? But as it turns out, the Seelie King doesn't actually want a wife, so because our lead girl is not interested in him whatsoever, but the Seelie King does need to choose someone, the two end up making a pact. They're gonna fake date. Unfortunately for our lead girl, this might come with some issues. Like, she agrees to this, but a lot of people really want her position. Like, they really want to be the Seely King's wife. So suddenly, her life is threatened. But also, unfortunately for her, as she spends more and more time with the Seely King, the two grow closer, and she's finding him very irresistible. I'm looking forward to a fantasy romance with fake dating, because I feel like that doesn't often... Like, a lot of contemporary r romances have fake dating, but it's one of my favorite tropes. Like, I just love it. Like, where is the line? Like, they never realize they've crossed the line between fake dating and actual dating, and I just love to see it. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to reading a fantasy romance with it because I feel like I don't often get that. So if you got any other suggestions or recommendations with fantasy um, and fake dating, let me know. Like, I'd love to see it, so. But that is our April book club pick. I'm very excited. It's just very thin though, which is a bit surprising. Apparently the sequel came out recently as well, so that's dangerous. Very dangerous. And then, cannot tell you what this is about, but I've seen it on everyone's bookshelves and I got curious and then I made a rash decision because I felt like, I felt like, I felt really bad. Let's not swear in today's video. <laughs> Have I sworn already? I don't know, anyway. So I got Dark Fae by San Valenti and Carolyn Peckham, who also wrote Zodiac Academy, which everyone's loving apparently. This takes place in the same world, but this is written before. So as far as I know, you kinda don't have to read Zodiac Academy before going into this one, but I've been told that the world building is a little bit better in Zodiac Academy, so I'm gonna read the first one of those just to get some facts on the world and then I'm gonna go into this. Um, but uh, maybe read them at the same time or like right after- oh, that's too much. I don't know, but I really wanted this. So I have- <laughs> this is a reverse harem fantasy romance, and that's apparently a thing that I enjoy reading. I don't know why, but I just do. I cannot tell you. Why choose romance is actually quite good. <laughs> So I made a very rash decision and she's now in my collection. I hate the other covers is all I'm gonna say. They got dudes on them without shirts on and I hate that. But uh, at some point, hopefully they'll, maybe, not hopefully, maybe if I like this one, they'll end up in my collection too. So I just, I don't know, rash decisions. But it's like, it's why choose romance with Faye. What's not to love? I don't know. So I think those were my like new adult books. Let's take these down, continue on to adult. I don't know, I love being in my fantasy romance era, but as someone who prefers to read physical books, it's very expensive buying indie books, isn't it? It's very expensive. I love doing it though. Like, I don't know, it's very expensive for paper bags, but I like the whole... It feels very cheap for me sometimes to read them on Kindle Unlimited. Like, I don't feel like the authors get enough out of it. I don't know how it works. Tell me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but if I can, I like to support them a little bit more than, uh, than that. So anyway, moving on. I got three sets of super exciting, super exciting special editions to show you. So we're gonna start out with probably... I don't know which one I'm most excited for. <laughs> So I was lucky enough to get the Illumicrate Crescent City set when it was on sale. I think it sold out fairly quickly. I think they had some left on day two or during the after like general sale, but as far as I remember they sold out sort of quickly. So these are Sarah J Mass. House of Earth and Blood and House of Sky and Breath. And if you want to see the back, looks like this has a signature. Not an actual signature, but a foiled on signature. And I am so excited to have special editions of these because I love this universe so much. So we've got quite a lot to show. I did post these on Instagram already, so you might have seen that if you follow me over there, but in case you haven't, I'm gonna give you all the details. We have stenciled, no, printed edges right here, nice and detailed. Also a very chunky book, very. We have end papers that look like this. And this is uh, gonna be a little bit difficult to show you because I don't wanna spoil anything for you, but this does come with page overlays. So you put them in like this. 
over the page. So when you read the book, you suddenly get a picture show up, but it's a bit hard to show you because I don't want to break the book. I want to show you this one. It's Danica and Bryce sitting, I think it's supposed to be like a, yeah, a picture frame. So you can see the two girls. And then another one that comes after. We have, ooh, we have Rune and Hunt and Bryce doing research in the library, um, or at the like, yeah, I'm gonna call it library. <laughs> well, the ba the Haba, the Bara, the Haba, the Baha. Can never remember her name, but I love her. She's watching her TV show down here at the bottom. <laughs> That's the whole thing, so nice to see it included. But yeah, I don't want to show you the other ones. Spoilers. So I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I just, in case you haven't read Crescent City, I don't want to spoil anything for you. So I'm not going to show you the other page overlays, but I'm sure you can find them on Instagram if you have read it and you want to see them. The last thing with the first one is we have Inside Dust Jacket Art of Danica and Bryce and they look gorgeous. This is exactly like body wise how I imagine Bryce. So it's very nice to see my depiction of her in my head on paper, if you will. I thought that was very cool when I saw the, the teasers. And then they started out giving her rounded ears, but Bryce is actually half face, she's demi face, So she does have pointed ears. And I was very like, she needs to have pointed ears. Do we have an update on her pointed ears? Did they make sure to give her pointed ears? Did they change it? <laughs> I think I annoyed so many people on the Illumicrate server, but I was very like, I want to see her have pointed ears. <laughs> I don't know, it's a, it's a thing. So very chunky, but sequel, we got Hunt on the cover. These are just the standard UK covers, by the way, but I just look like this. The motif is a little bit different. We have a bird thing in the middle. And then we got foiling on the Nick cover, foiling on the back as well. We have, I don't know where this is, but I think I have an idea. We have end paper art that looks like this. I don't know, I kind of have an idea of where this is, but I'm not entirely sure. And then I'm gonna show you one page overlay from this as well. So I'm not gonna tell you who it is, but we got two two uh, two guys and a cat and um, some pizza. Oh, I could eat pizza. Anyway, the last page overlay in this one had me squeal. <laughs> like I was just like, no, they didn't. <laughs> I can't show you. I'm so sorry. I know that's so annoying, but anyway. Inside dust jacket art looks like this. So we have Hunt and Bryce over on this side over here. Looking very nice. Although I will say Hunt for me looks a little bit too young in this depiction. I don't know. He's a little bit like young pretty boy. Trust them baby. Something like that. Don't know what it is. He's just not like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> but it's all okay. Having spent a lot of time on these, I think we should move on. Sorry for not telling you the story, but I have talked about Crescent City before on the channel. So we also have, oh gosh. And these arrived today. And I don't know how I managed to get these either. Cause these are the Broken Binding uh, books. Um, the, the Broken Binding set of Roots of Chaos by Samantha Shannon. And they sold out in Europe. So outside of UK, outside of the US. I can't remember exactly how they split it up, but they sold out in like nine, 10 minutes or something. <laughs> It was very quickly, if not quicker than that. I cannot remember really. It was very quickly. Like, I don't know how I managed to get these books. I have no idea. I swear, like 15 seconds after I, I got purchase went through, they said they were sold out. They were out of stock. So I was like, I, surely I did not get them. And then I got the order confirmation and I just like, <laughs> You gotta be kidding. Um, so I have them and I'm so happy that I do because I only have a paper bag of Priory of the Orange Tree. Loved the book, just wanted the ending to be a little bit longer, but that's basically all I have to say on that. Like everything else, perfect. Such good world building. It's so rich with story. And I've been so disappointed that I only have a paper bag off it because why would I not just have bought the hardback? So the fact that I have it now, but as a special edition that is so gorgeous, makes me so, so happy. So we have printed edges with a dragon on them. I hope the camera's focusing, but here we go. Looking gorgeous. We also have foiling on the naked cover with the dragon foiling on the back as well there's a very long quote on the spine in case you want to read it you can pause the video and this also has gorgeous end papers with the dragon too so is this the dragon with wings no it's not which means that this is the dragon from the oh they neither of them have wings but you have wings on the cover okay it's because they're it doesn't really matter there are two different kinds of dragons in these books 
and one has wings and the other one doesn't. So I think the ones that don't are from the east and they're kind of like the good dragons and then we have the ones from the west that have wings and they're not good dragons. It's a whole thing. These are stunning. I love them. I'm so happy I have them. At least as far as I remember that's how it is with the dragons but like don't quote me on it. I might have, my details might have been a little bit blurred since reading them. Also signed by Samantha Shannon and it has a ribbon bookmark as well which you can see like, where is it? Oh, it's right there. I might, this nail broke today so just ignore it. I'm very annoyed with it. <laughs> and then the sequel came out very, very recently. A Day of Fall and Night and I'm so happy that I have it. I am so insanely happy. This doesn't have wings. So this is from the east. Yes. But foiling on the naked cover that looks like this. So stunning. Love the blue and the gold. If you want to pause the video and read the quote you can do that right here. And then on the back it continues from the front. It looks very good. And then the edges. Oh I love them. So this, this is another good dragon. As far as I know maybe there's been bad dragons without wings. I wouldn't know because I've not read this one yet. <laughs> and then end papers look like this. It's just so through and through a stunning book. And then also, it's also signed. She had to do so, so many signatures in so little time. I hope her wrists are doing okay. I don't actually know which, which I, have, I haven't read the synopsis for this one. Just squeaky. Just because I didn't feel like I had to. Tunuva Melim is a sister of the Priory. For 50 years, she has trained to slay worms, but none have appeared since the Nameless One, and the younger generation is starting to question the Priory's purpose. So the Nameless One is like this big dragon. Um, very evil. Very mean. To the north, in the queendom of Inus, or Innis, Sabran the Ambitious has married the new king of Hroth. That does not feel natural to me. Hroth. <laughs> Narrowly saving both realms from ruin. Their daughter, Glorian, trails in their shadow exactly where she wants to be. The dragons of the east have slept for centuries. Dumai has spent her life in a Seikinis mountain temple trying to wake the gods from their long slumber. Oh, uh, slumber, sorry. Uh, they call, in the east, they call the dragons gods. So when they say wake the gods, they mean wake the dragons. But I'm sure you could figure that out because <laughs> it says the dragons have been asleep. Anyway, I just wanted to make sure. Now someone from her mother's past is coming to you pend her fate. When the dread mound erupts, bringing with it an age of terror and violence, these women must find the strength to protect humankind from a devastating threat. This takes place before Priory of the Orange Tree as well, so because we have to do with uh, the big bad dragon in that one. I don't know what we have to do in this one. No idea. And then, um, oh I'm so happy that I have them. <laughs> this makes me very happy. <laughs> Anyway, I also managed to get the set, which also sold out very quickly. I think I found my lucky thing is that I'm just very good at getting special edition sets before they sell out. Yeah, I don't know. Is that a good ability to have? I feel like it's very expensive. <laughs> but I also got the Ninth House or as the series is actually called Alex Stern set by Lee Bardugo. This is the uh, Illumicrate set. So we got something to go through with these ones as well. First off, redesign cover. This is Ninth House. So the original had like a snake on it as well. They've kind of done like a reimagined version of the cover. I love this. I'm looking very stunning though. I love the uh, skulls as well and the color combinations, just beautiful. The back looks like this and then this just has sprayed black edges. But what I think is super cool about this is that if you have the cover here, right? So the dra- or not the dragon, <laughs> the snake motif. The naked cover it looks like this. You see they go well? together like so good such a good i don't it's just very good spine looks like this is also stunning and then we have end papers that looks like this so this is alex stern over here she is a badass with a lot of tattoos and she loves to wear black clothing and i love her because she is awesome and then as for hellbent which came out in january so we have a rabbit a uh, knuckle thing and then some pom grenades right that's what they are the back looks like i don't want to ruin it okay the back looks like this i thought i broke it for a second see this is why i don't touch my special editions oh i got scared but we got the front cover right and then we have a uh, rabbit skeleton on the naked cover in foil spine looks like this and then we have 
Darlington. I can't remember his first name, but he's uh, he's a preppy kind of guy. He's a nerd. He reads a lot. And um, there's a whole situation with him in the first one that I really want resolved in this one. He's kind of, can I say that? I don't know. I don't want to say it. I'm not going to say it. But there's a situation with him in the first one. <laughs> so um, also just want to say, Miss Barduco is a babe, okay? An actual babe, respectfully. Very respectfully. So anyway, in... At least 9th house, we follow Alex Stern, who has a bit of a past, but she's also gone through some very, like, heartbreaking trauma. Um, very heavy on the triggers, so just, just so we know. But she's been going through some things over the past years. I think she ended up in the hospital or something. I can't remember exactly how it was. And then she was contacted by, was it Harvard? <laughs> Yale. All those universities are the same to me, like, I don't know. But Yale. Someone from Yale contacts her because they need her to join this, like, basically for her to go to Yale to be a student, she has to join this secret society or this, like, secret group that keeps an eye on the secret societies because the secret societies are performing magic that they're not supposed to perform. And then when she's there at the campus, a dead girl shows up. She doesn't show up. Um, Alex Stern comes across a dead body, a dead girl, and she's told that she should not get involved in this dead girl business, but she decides that she wants to solve, figure out what happened to the dead girl. So that's what the first one is about. And then an important note that I forgot to weave in there is that Alex can see dead people. She can see ghosts. I also don't know how I would have thrown that in there, but now you know. So it's a part of the synopsis. I'm sure they did a much better job at it than I did, but um, yeah. Now there's a dead girl on campus and Alex seems to be the only person who won't accept the neat answer the police and campus administration have come up with for her murder. Because Alex knows the secret societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than anyone ever imagined. So they're tampering with forbidden magic and stuff. Alex is a very cool character and I'm looking forward to getting reacquainted with her in Hellbend. Ninth House is a weird one, but give it a chance. I loved it. It's very long drawn. I was, or not long drawn, because that's negative. Um, pacing, it's very like, it's just weird, but it, it's so good. Long drawn was the wrong choice of word. Just want to say, because I don't feel like it's long drawn, but it's just, it's a bit of a weird one, and it definitely, take your time, time with it to understand everything that's going on in it as well, because it's a bit, it's weird. So, yes, and I still have questions after reading the first one. What's going on with Darlington? I don't get it. Also, Darlington, what kind of name is that? Moving on. The last one I got, which I think technically I could have put under New Adult. So I am, again, in my fantasy romance era. And so I got the sequel to Neon Gods. I forgot what it was called for a second. Electric Idol by Katie Robert, which I believe is about Psyche. Yes, Psyche? Psyche. I don't know how to pronounce her name. And Eros, who show up in the first one, so I can't really tell you, but this is like a reimagination of, or a retelling of some of the stories um, involving Greek gods, and it's very smutty. <laughs> so, very, very smutty. A lot of smut, and it's like in your face smut. It's not like cute, hidden smut. I don't know what hidden smut it is, but it's not cute. It's very in your face. Just, you've been warned. But anyway, I thought Neon Gods was pretty fun. So I decided to get the sequel, but um, we'll see how it goes. And I can't, do you fit in there? No? Okay, I'm gonna take these down. We're moving on to uh, contemporary. I have a good amount of contemporary books in this haul because I'm also on a bit of a romance kick. As you can probably tell, I don't know what it is. I just, that's what I'm feeling like. So first one, is one that I know has been doing its doing rounds is that how you say that <laughs> on TikTok especially so I got Icebreaker by Hannah Grace which is the first one in the Maple Hills companion novel series so I think the sequel is coming out kind of soonish actually or sometime later this year so we follow Anastasia who is a an ice skating how do you say that an ice skating she's an ice skater <laughs> an ice skating kind of gal I'm gonna go with that figure skater. I just remembered. Is that how you say that? Now I'm starting to second guess myself. Moving on. She ends up at Maple Hills University after getting University of California at Maple Hills. Okay. After getting a scholarship. And so she is basically there because she wants to have a shot at Team USA so she can be like a professional figure skater. 
Yes, she does pears as well, by the way. Unfortunately for her, when she shows up there, I don't know what's going on, like if there's been like a mishap in the schedule or something, but it turns out that she has to share the rink with this guy whose name is Nate. And he is obviously an ice hockey player. And so the two of them don't get along, don't do well sharing the rink. Anastasia does not like him at all. But then unfortunately something happens to her partner. And so she sees this is kind of like, it's an awkward situation because she suddenly feels like Nate is the only option for her to still have her shot, if you get what I mean. So the two of them have to work together. How does an ice hockey player a ho hockey player, sorry. Isn't there also hockey not on ice? Or is that just... Anyway, how how does he end up being a nice skate figure skater? I am really messing up the terminology today. Anyway, I'm very excited for this. I love a good college romance as well, or university romance. So, I also got the Lumicrate edition of Loath to Love You by Ali Hazelwood, which is a collection of her short stories. So we have Under One Roof, Stuck With You and Below Zero. I don't know what they're about whatsoever. We got foiling on the naked cover. It looks like this. It's uh, actually the whole thing is redesigned because the normal version is red. It's like an orangey red kind of color with cogwheels with the pictures in, but they did Polaroids instead. Obviously in a cute lavender kind of color. And then the Polaroids are also foiled onto the naked cover. Blue sprayed edges as well. And it is signed in a shimmery pink color by Allie Hazelwood too. But I don't know what the three books are about or the three short stories i cannot tell you <laughs> the back of it looks like this though so if you want to read the quote feel free to but as far as i know they're called steminist novellas so oh i can't tell you what this is about either i just pre-ordered the sequel because i have no self-control whatsoever i got exodus by uh kate stewart which is the sequel to flock which is that so this is the second one in the raven hood trilogy is that what it's called giving us all the steam buckle up okay well that's all i need to know okay yeah i'm so Old. Okay, no, I'm kidding. But um, as far as I know, the first one, or as far as I've heard, the first one is actually pretty good. So I took my chance getting the sequel, but I cannot tell you what it's about. I remember the first one is about a girl who ends up at the small town because um, basically her father, her parents are not together, and her father, for some reason, she needs to stay at this town for a while, and she's been giving a set of like things she has to do according to her dad and then she runs into one boy one guy who she kind of likes but there's also this other guy who's for some reason also giving her feels and there's a whole situation so but that's all i remember <laughs> I got these two by Lucy Score because I have read Things We Never Got Over and I loved it. And then I meant to read Things We Hide From The Light on KU, but I just really, I gave this five stars. So when given the opportunity to get this as a paperback so that I can reread it at some point and annotate it, I decided to also get this one with it. Um, so I'm going to go into them at some point and then annotate them a lot, which I'm very excited for. <laughs> but I can't tell you what this is actually about because uh, I've not read this synopsis for it and I kind of don't want to. I know that it's about the brother of the- so the guy in this one is like a, a bad boy kind of type. Not really, he's just kind of like- he has the look at least and he's- he owns a bar and he's kind of grumpy and his brother is basically the opposite of him but he's also the police chief or something or like the sheriff. I can't remember exactly what kind of- do they have sheriffs in, sheriffs in the south? I don't know but he's a good guy. So on this one it says he's absolutely not falling for the good girl and on this one it says good guy don't fall for bad girls. So I'm guessing we have like an opposite situation, a good guy, bad girl situation, which I'm looking forward to. So anyway, I also, because I found this at the store, saw that it was Lucy Score and I just jumped on it. Not, I didn't buy it from the store though. I bought it from home because it was a little bit too pricey at the store. So I decided to, um, it actually showed up first page or something and it was on sale. I got Maggie Moves On by Lucy Score, which is about a house flipping sensation and YouTube star called Maggie who moves into an old Victorian mansion that she has to uh, renovate her on her own because that's what she does for a living. And apparently the landscaper that she's hired is a bit of a nuisance to her. Also because he's very flirty. And then he has a dog. His name is Kevin apparently. But as we know, like she's only supposed to be there for four months to renovate the house. She doesn't want to put down roots. However, he's very tempting to her, so. Yes, Maggie moves on. We got the simple, hmm. 
almost hit myself in the face there. <laughs> Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker, which is about a girl who goes back to Alaska, was it? Yeah, because her father is there and her father doesn't have a lot of days left to live. So she's there to take care of him, but also to, because her mother basically took her and left Alaska because her mother didn't want to be there. She brought her along. Her name is Kala. Yeah. So she hasn't really had a relationship with her father, but then learning that he's not doing well, she decides to go to Alaska to get to know him and just be with him. And uh, as she's there, she bumps into a guy whose name is Jonah. He works with her father, so that's how they get to know each other. But he's like an Alaskan guy through and through, and she doesn't necessarily want to stay there. So we got a bit of a situation. Kind of like this one, actually. Kind of, I see it. I see similarities, but like, I don't know. A little bit. I I think this is a rom-com whereas this is like a little bit less on the calm <laughs> but I'm looking forward to it. Ow! I'm reading you last. And then I got this another indie book. So I have Does It Hurt by H.D. Carlton which I saw several times pop up on Instagram, I'm not gonna lie, so I got very intrigued, decided to look into it and now I'm holding it in my hand so I don't know what happened. But this is about a girl who it's kind of like, it's very abstract what happened. But essentially a guy and a girl are for some reason on a boat and then a storm hits and they have to, they end up at a lighthouse. They hate each other, but also I think they've been together. <laughs> um, like, you know, anyway, but they kind of dislike each other afterwards, but they end up at this lighthouse because there's a storm and their boat stopped working. <laughs> It broke. Anyway, and then there's a lighthouse housekeeper who's a, a caretaker who's got some bad vibes as well. And that's all I know. That's all I'm getting from the synopsis. But hey, that was kind of cool. Desperately trying not to read anything. See, there's like a whale or shark. That's a shark. I know my animals sometimes. Definitely a shark, not a whale. So between text. Anyway, pretty cool. I just saw it when I was flipping through and I was like, wait a minute. So, does it hurt? And those were my um, adult contemporaries. So I'm gonna leave them here because the next ones will not be able to stand on their own on the shelves. So this is fine. <laughs> because lastly, I got five graphic novels. So we're almost done, guys. Hang in there. I have Saga Volume 2 and 3 by Brian K. Vaughn and Fiona Stables. And these are... <laughs> <laughs> I keep forgetting the back. Ow! The back looks like this. <laughs> but anyway, so these are, um, I can't tell you what they're about. The first one is about a aliens, two aliens, a guy and a girl on opposing sides in this war and they end up having a baby and they go on the run and it's fun. It's a fun time. So I got volume two and three because I have read a lot of the first volume and I really loved it. So I took a chance. I'm the kind of person who, I've said this before in in uh, book hauls, but I am less likely to pick up a first book in a series if I don't have the sequel to it because I just don't like the idea of having to sit and wait for it to arrive. It's a thing, so sometimes you gotta take a chance. I'm pretty confident that I'll love Saga though. I also have volume four in the Monstrous series, so I have read one and two. Very, very good. Love them. And um, also the style in this is like lovely, very detailed. Kippa, you're so cute. <laughs> I'm sorry, how can you not love this? I love the fox. <laughs> He's so cute. Okay, anyway, um, but <laughs> having a fangirl moment for a second. In these ones, we follow our elite girl who is on the run from both, um, so she's in a world where the Akana, she's an Akana. They're basically like animals that walk on two legs and talk and are clever and stuff. And then the witches, they are at war with each other or have been at least. And she's an arcana, but she's on the run from the arcanas. She's also on the run from the witches. She's on the run from basically everyone, but she's also searching for a friend and for answers from her mother because there's some questionable things from her past. She has some powers that she's not supposed to have that are very dangerous. And um, there's a question of gods as well in this. And um, they're kind of creepy. I don't know if you can tell from the guy over here, but um, very creepy. So it's also horror, I just want to say. Like uh, monstrous is fantasy horror, definitely. Then I got, I don't really know what this is about fully, but I got Fruits Basket uh, Volume 1 by Nat Natsuki Takaya. So what I know about this is that we follow a girl who has lost her family and she's living in a tent 
And then she finds out that the place that she's placed her tent on, like the land, is owned by a family. And what is it? Or like a clan. Okay, a clan. And the owner, the owner discovers her secret. Her secret is that she has powers, I'm pretty sure. But as it turns out, the family also has secrets of their own. When they are hugged by people of the opposite sex, they turn into animals. I don't know. It's kind of... Or like specific animals. Animals of the zodiac, uh, the Chinese zodiac. So <laughs> yes. But I'm pretty sure she has powers of some kind as well. I can't remember how it is. We'll find out once we read it. And lastly, I got... Because I have no self-control whatsoever. I... <sighs> I got volume three of Lore Olympus and I just have not read volume two yet because I love it so much that I don't want it to be over. <laughs> it's so stupid. I know. But once I've read it, I can't reread it for the first time. You know what I mean? So I'm just like, I keep pushing it like, no, not today. Save it for a rainy day because you love volume one so much. And so I got volume three. I know that I love volume two. That's the thing. That's why I can't read it. It's so dumb. I know, that's the thing. But anyway, <laughs> got volume three. The first one is about, it's a retelling of Hades and Persephone. So we follow Persephone who is new to the world of the Greek gods. And it's about her being introduced to this world with all the parties and the clubbing and everything else that's going on. There's a lot of drama. And then she ends up in some trouble and ends up with Hades who's very taken with her. And I think that's all I wanna say. Think like drama, but with Greek gods, modern Greek gods, and very vibrant pictures. Kind of like a watercolor vibe. It's, well, not really. No, not a watercolor. Sometimes a watercolor vibe. <laughs> Sometimes. I will show you the style because I love it. So it looks like this. Yes. Very unique, right? But that's all I'm going to show you. Who is that? I am reading ahead. Anyway, very excited to first read volume two, but then get to volume three. And volume four is coming out kind of soonish as well. And then volume five at the end of the year. I'm already way ahead of myself, I know. So that was the, that was this haul. Sorry for talking for so long and also taking my time showing the special editions, but they need the moment. So do I regret it? No. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, if you want to check out any of the books, they are linked to in the description box down below. If you've read any of them, let me know what you thought, whether it's good or bad. Feel free to let me know. But that's all I got for you guys today. So I hope you all enjoyed this very long book haul. If you did, feel free to hit the thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this from me, but also videos like unboxings and so bookish unboxings, like all the monthly subs. I have issues. It's fine. I'm acknowledging it. <laughs> like I know. <laughs> but also we do reading vlogs over here and TBR videos and monthly wrap ups and all the other booktube stuff. So if that's of any interest, definitely stick around by clicking on the subscribe button. But that is all I got for you guys today. So I hope you all enjoyed it and I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye. Oh, you know, yeah.